Okay, so today we're going to discuss the difference between what is a summary and an actual close reading analysis of any piece of work of literature. We're going to be discussing a really good strategy for this called MIST, M-I-S-T. It's an acronym that each letter stands for something important. Now, first, before we do that, I want to briefly discuss the difference between a summary and an analysis. One of the biggest mistakes students sometimes make when they're asked to write a literary analysis is instead of giving an analysis of their own opinions and thoughts, they'll give us a summary, telling us what's happening in the short story. And the frustrating part with that as a teacher is I don't want to know a summary because in truth, I've already read the piece. I already know what's gonna happen. And so sometimes they think that if you're writing a summary, you're proving that you did the reading, but that's not really what we're looking for. What's really interesting is how you interpret the reading. And every single person's perspective brings different insight to characters and situations. It's why we have book clubs, because we all read the same piece of literature, then we come together and we'll discuss what did you get out of it, and which characters did you like, and who did you relate to, and why do you think this happened? And each of our different perspectives is what makes that conversation interesting. That's what analysis is. We want all of our students to write a piece that helps make it even more interesting to us as teachers. I like to use an example with my students of a picture. Like I'll show this picture for example, and then I'll ask them, give me a summary, tell me what's in this picture. And students will say, a girl doing yoga, here it shows how many likes it got, so I'm guessing this is a social media post. It tells you where she is, she's standing on these cement pillars at the Holocaust Museum. And then I'll ask them now, give me an analysis of this picture. And that's the part that's really interesting because sometimes my students come at it thinking, well, how beautiful and connected she is that she's doing yoga, this spiritual sport in a space that's sacred and that she's connecting to maybe her past. And some people on the flip side of that will see this picture and think it's disgusting and vile that she's using this Holocaust Museum as a means to gain social media followers and to make herself seem really enlightened when in reality she's kind of doing a yoga pose over the top of dead bodies of the people who've been slain through the Holocaust. A summary is what do you see? An analysis is how does this make you feel? And what does this show about the character? And how does the setting tell the story too? So a mistake that my students make when I ask them to write an analysis paper is they'll look at spark notes to try to have them tell you what are the themes that you saw and tell me the characters that you saw because they don't feel like they're smart enough to be able to uncover those things for themselves. And the reality is I don't feel that you have to be smart to uncover how literature makes you feel and how you connect that literature to yourself. And maybe you don't catch every single symbol. That's perfectly okay. What's important is that you take what you caught and what you interpret and that you're able to share it. That's what makes that discussion interesting. I like to teach a strategy with my students called MIST. M-I-S-T. I actually learned it in an AP conference that I did over the summer. And it helps break down four different parts that you can analyze in an analysis paper. M, I, S, T. M stands for the mood, I for the imagery, S for the structure, and T for the tension. Now we're gonna focus on each one of these to give you an idea of how to break it down in this way. M is the first thing, and that's just from the get-go, the gut reaction. After you're done reading, how does this piece make you feel? My teacher this summer called it the woo-hoo or the boo-hoo. After you read, did you feel good and enlightened, a woo-hoo? Did it give you that feeling of unity and completion, joy or celebration? Or was it a boo-hoo? Made you feel frustrated, isolated, sad? And maybe the piece appealed to both of those emotions. Try to think of how this piece made you feel and why. Also for the mood, consider the sound of the words. Were there lots of consonant sounds? Would it feel choppy and sharp? Or was it lyrical and beautiful and somewhat poetic? How did the words make you feel? How did the story make you feel? How did the poetry make you feel? And the way it makes you feel is gonna be different than the way it makes someone else feel who's had different experiences than you. This is why it's part of the analysis. The second letter in MIST is I, which is imagery, and this is an important one. So part of imagery is how did it help you imagine what was happening? And with all the senses. Remember there are five senses. What did you see? What did you hear? What did you smell? What did you taste? What did you feel? Textures and temperatures. 
Did the author do a good job of helping you visually be there and experience the imagery of all of the textures and temperatures around where you were? And then the other part of imagery is figurative language. In which ways were they showing you things without being bold and upfront and just saying it? Which ways were they maybe using similes and metaphors? Maybe they used hyperbole, which is those great exaggerations or personifying things. Did you see any motifs? Those repeating sentences or phrases or images that you can go through a whole list and think, how did my author perhaps use this tool? Sometimes they don't use all of them, sometimes they use all of them. This is where the emotional tension is really obvious. So pay close attention to these kind of things in the pieces that you're reading. All right, the S in mist stands for structure. Structure is about how is this piece being put together? In poetry, you can look at it with rhyme schemes. You can look at it with where the stanzas are and breaks. But structure can also be found in short fiction and in long fiction. You want to pay attention to the point of view of the story, the structure, if there are big shifts in what's happening, mood and tone shifts or imagery shifts. And consider how your author set up the story with foreshadowing or flashbacks. In The Road by Cormac McCarthy, for example, there's a structure element where this is supposed to be post-apocalyptic, right? After the world's rules and organization and life's kind of wild and crazy. And because of that, he intentionally removes punctuation and re removes some of the grammar rules. That was a stylistic choice to show that rules don't apply anymore. With structure, you want to pay attention to any time you're transitioning to a new idea or a new scene and how the author is actually writing the story. Now the last piece, T, is for tension and that part's really important. A really good novel isn't a clear cut, easy, finished, wipe your hands when you're done and walk away. A really good novel for an essay brings discussion, makes you think about why the author is writing the way they are, makes you question the ending, or question characters and motivations, maybe trying to figure out something that you hadn't seen before. This is the piece that's tension. What is the problem with the story? And why is it that it's difficult to walk away from this story? Why is it haunting me even later? What is it that my mind is trying to grapple with in some message or understanding of why characters and people behave the way that they do and why sometimes justice isn't served? Tension is where the author is trying to teach us something. When you can feel it pushing or pulling against the moral compass that you have. Trying to figure out what are the things that just feel out of place and make me feel unsettled or confused or inspired. On this piece for tension, really sit with yourself and think, what is it that I gained or learned or experienced in reading this piece? How is the author intentionally trying to make you feel? Or what is it that you're taking away? If you're getting offended or bothered by something, write about that. That is what's interesting. Not all pieces of writing have that tension element, but the best pieces of writing do. A really great way to use this mist strategy for close reading of poetry and fiction is to take a short piece, perhaps a poem, and read through it several times, writing down the things that you're noticing each time because as we learn and grow, our experiences change. And even sometimes rereading the same piece, even on the same day, we can gain insight and notice things we perhaps didn't notice before. So before writing a literary analysis paper or paragraph, make sure you consider all of these elements in the MIST strategy for your close reading. Remember that your teachers who have read your close reading analysis papers most likely have already read the books that you're analyzing. And they don't want a summary of what happened. They want to know how did you feel? How did it impact you? What did you see? What did you experience? What connections did you make? Did you notice any motifs that perhaps I didn't notice? And you don't have to find something brand new that's never been heard of before. You just have to make a connection. Start practicing by reading short pieces. I'm going to be having my students read a piece called A Day at the Dump. We're going to look at these short pieces and consider each one of their different interpretations and analysis of the piece from the mood, the imagery, the structure, and the tension. And then when we share with each other, it's fascinating to hear how different interpretations of the poem help us all learn something. It's why I like literature, because there isn't always, this is the right answer and this is how everyone must feel. Instead, how do you feel? How does it make you understand the world? And I want to learn about you and the piece at the same time. If you'd like, I have a link to a worksheet for that that you can use. If you're going to be doing a close reading analysis, you can take notes as you go. And that's it. Keep reading.